In this video, I'll show you a comparison between two popular travel backpacks, the Osprey Farpoint 40 and the Osprey Porter 46. I've had the Farpoint since about 2015 and the Porter for a few weeks now. They've made some updates to the bags recently, so I'll be showing you the most recent versions in this video. This video will be mostly a side-by-side -side comparison between the features on these two packs. And in future videos, I'll go into more detail how to pack these bags and show you a comparison between the two size versions of the 30 and the 46 liter version of the Porter. Because these packs are both made by the same company, the materials and hardware they use are really similar. They both use a combination of ripstop nylon and then a regular non-ripstop nylon. And while there are some slight differences in the fabrics, the ripstop is slightly thicker, a 420 denier on the Porter, compared to a 210 denier on the Farpoint, the exterior fabrics is virtually the same. The interior, however, on these packs is an extremely bright green on the Farpoint, and then a bright yellow on the Porter over here. It's pretty common to see contrasting colors for interior fabrics. It makes it easier to pack your bag and to find your gear, but I think they went a little bit over the top on the brightness and the color on these two bags. The zippers and hardware on these two packs is virtually identical. They both use large YKK zippers and off-brand plastic hardware. They both have two lockable zippers, a large number 10 YKK on the main compartments, and then a smaller number eight on each laptop compartment, and then mostly smaller number fives on the rest of the interior pockets and zippers. The zipper pulls are both the same. It's a thin paracord attached to either this custom large plastic pull tab or this smaller finger zipper pull. The hardware is all off-brand nylon for the buckles and adjusters, with the one exception being on the far point, they use YKK buckles on the hip belt and on the compression strap buckles. These two buckles are also noticeably larger in the Porter compared to the far point. That was the compression strap buckle, and then you can see the hip belt buckle on the Porter is also almost twice as large as the far point. I wanna compare the size and dimensions between these two packs. The Porter gets a lot of criticism for being a little bit large for a carry-on bag, but that's only true if you overpack it. If you underpack this bag, you can easily compress it down to fit on an overhead. Fully packed out, the Porter measures 22 by 14 with a width of 11 inches when the bag is fully packed out. However, this thing has some really awesome compression straps that allow you, if you don't overpack the bag, to unclip these things and clip them over on these side straps. And you can compress this thing down to nine inches to get it to fit on an overhead pretty easily. The Farpoint, on the other hand, is already a carry-on size bags with dimensions of about 22 by 14 wide by about nine inches in height. So you can already use this thing as cabin luggage as long as you don't overpack it too much. One major difference worth mentioning is the size and the fit on these bags. The Osprey Farpoint works so well for so many people, largely because this thing has a lot of size options. The Farpoint I have here is the small medium size, which fits 15 to 19 inch torso lengths. They also have the bag in a small medium size, which fits up to 22 inch torso lengths. And then this exact same bag is also available in a women's fit called the Fairview, which it comes in two sizes, small and medium that ranges from 13 to 20 inches. So really you actually have four size options for the Farpoint that will range from torso lengths from 13 inches up to 22 inches. The Porter 46 on the other hand only has one size options. So there's less of a chance that this bag will fit well for any given person. Now they don't list the torso range length on the Porter like they do on the Farpoint on their website, but I think we can estimate it by comparing the two bags. This is the far point in the small medium size. On the website, it says it fits torso lengths from about 15 to 19 inches. And you do have some wiggle room here in the shoulder strap adjustment, but to be consistent, I'll measure these bags from where the shoulder straps attach to the bag down to the middle of the hip belt strap. The distance on the far point is about 14 and a half to 15 inches. And then coming over here, measuring the distance on the Porter 46 bags is quite a bit longer, at least 16 inches here. So this makes this bag kind of more of a medium to large size packs. I'll show you later, but this bag is gonna fit me pretty well, but it might not fit someone a little bit shorter or taller than me. Both of these packs have some nice security features, including locking zippers on the main and the laptop compartments, as well as this top flap that's gonna hide most of these top zippers. 
Both the main compartment and the laptop compartments have locking zippers on both these bags, which makes it easy to lock them or clip them together. And then the top of these packs have a fabric flap and compression straps that will hide the zippers. If you move the zippers on these main compartments over here to the side, then you can flip up the fabric flap and clip the compression straps down. And now they're completely hidden from view and hard to get to. Now let's compare the exterior components between the Porter and the Farpoint. These packs have a lot of features in common. They both have a laptop compartment, stowaway backpack straps, top compression straps, and then two top organizational pockets. However, the form and the function on these is very different. Starting with the compression straps, they look very similar, the two straps going across the top of the bag, but the ones in the Porter work much better. The straps on the far point connect to a fabric flap that covers the zippers. It works pretty well to compress the bag from the side, but they don't do a lot to squish the bag down from the top. The straps on the Porter, on the other hand, attach to this firm foam side paneling, which does a really good job of bringing in the compression from the sides and the top. And like I showed you before, they also have these two buckle options. You can clip them together on the top, or if the bag isn't packed out too much, you can extend these zippers over to the side, which really lets you squish this bag down. The next biggest difference between these two packs is the laptop compartment. The Porter does a much better job by locating the laptop compartment on the back here instead of on the front like it does on the far point. This sleeve is large and has a ton of padding. It easily holds my 15 inch Dell laptop and it has an additional padded sleeve here to hold a tablet. There's a ton of padding in this compartment. It has two layers of padding on the back and then an additional thick soft panel between the laptop and the main compartment. It also has really good side and bottom protection for your laptop. The laptop on the side is really well padded with these thick side panels. And then there's a really decent false bottom that keeps your laptop a few inches off the bottom of the bag. The laptop compartment on the far point, however, is a padded sleeve located in this front organizational compartment instead of being behind the backpack straps in the back of the bag. This is a poor location for a few reasons. You want your heavy items closer to your back for good weight distribution and having a large heavy item like your laptop far away from your back is going to throw off your center of gravity and make the pack uncomfortable to carry. The sleeve is also really not very well protected. It works better for smaller laptops or tablets in here, but when you get something larger like this 15 inch Dell, it's gonna tend to stick out on the top, especially on the corners here. And it's even worse when the bag is really full. And this really doesn't offer you a lot of protection on the top here on the corners of your laptop. Now the external organizational pockets. They both have a top access slash pocket, a large back organizational pocket, and then the Porter has one additional back access slash pocket. The top slash pockets are about the same size. They're both located on top of the bag, but in slightly different positions. The main difference is the volume on the Porter pocket will go into the main compartment here. Well, the pocket on the far point is gonna go into this top organizational pocket. I like this front organizational compartment on the Porter much better. It's quite a bit smaller and thinner, but it has a lot more dividers, pockets, and mesh pockets in here for all your small items. Whereas the compartment on the far point is much larger, there's enough room in here, you can fit a small jacket or something in here, but there's really just one large main zippered pocket in here, and then the laptop sleeves. There's really no further organizational compartments for your small items. And then this front slash pocket on the Porter is also pretty nice. It goes most of the length of the bag, but it's pretty thin, so it's good for other small, thinner items like a travel wallet. Neither of these bags has a true external water bottle pocket. The far point has these two mesh pockets on the back of the bag. However, they don't work very well for storing a water bottle, and they're really better for storing other small items or wet clothes. The best thing for using a water bottle with either of these packs is to just make room in the main compartment. Another option is to use something like this collapsible water bottle. It's refillable and folds down to almost nothing when you're not using it. Now let's have a look at the carry options, which is a major difference between these two packs. The side carry handles are really similar. They both have two huge padded handles on the top and then one on the side of the bag. 
They're a little bit different as far as design goes, but they're both very well padded and comfortable. Both of these bags have these little plastic clips on the side here for attaching a crossbody shoulder strap. One is included with the far point, but it's not included with the porter. However, the one that comes with it is this really thin, basically just a thin nylon strap with no padding. If you are gonna carry the bag using this crossbody shoulder strap, I would just go ahead and pay $14. They have one they sell on the website that has quite a bit more padding than this one. As far as the backpack carry system goes, the comfort on these bags is gonna depend a lot on your body shape and how much you put in the bag. But I think the Farpoint has quite a few features that are gonna make this bag a lot more comfortable. To start with, the shoulder straps are more padded. They're wider and thicker on the far point, and they have better padding. There's two layers of foam, a firm, thick backing foam, and then this breathable air mesh on the back. Well, the Porter doesn't have the same back air ventilation mesh. The top where the backpack straps attach is also better on the far point. Instead of being sewn directly under the pack, like on the Porter, the far point straps attach to the pack with this fabric yoke, which makes the bag more comfortable and has it fit better on a wider range of neck widths. The size and padding on the hip straps is also night and day. The Porter straps are thin and they're not very long. Well, the hip straps on the far point are much thicker. They're wider, longer, have more padding with the same air ventilation as on the shoulder straps. There's a couple extra adjustability features. There's this side strap, which helps to pull the hip belt up and in. And then the adjuster on the buckle, instead of adjusting in the middle here, it adjusts over here on the side, which will keep this strap from dangling in front of you. The back padding is also really different between these two packs. The Porter over here has a huge amount of back padding, but there's very little contour and there's virtually no air ventilation. The back of this bag is basically just a big, flat, stiff panel. The back of the far point is built around this thick wire metal frame that goes around the edge of the bag instead of the firm foam padding like on the Porter. And then there's a firm frame sheet on the back here with a noticeable curve for lower back support. The back is also much softer, the squishy back mesh and a much better air ventilation. Both the backpack straps and the hip belts can be stowed away behind a fabric panel on these bags, but the setup is completely different. On the Porter, you detach the shoulder straps from the hip belts with these buckles and then tuck them into the zippered pocket on the top and then the hip belts tuck in to these little slits on the bottom of the bag. The straps on the far point, however, stay completely attached to the bag. And instead of stuck in, tucking them away, you access this fabric flap that's located in this Velcro pocket on the bottom of the bag. And then you just zip this thing around the backpack straps. I don't think either of these systems is really better than the other one. The Porter straps are a little bit easier to stow away but also because they're attached with this plastic buckle, you're relying on the entire weight of the pack to rest on this buckle. So you're kind of screwed if this thing breaks. Well, the shoulder straps on the far point are sewn onto the pack instead of being attached to the buckle, making it far less likely that they'll fail. Now I'll show you the carry comfort on these bags. I have the Porter packed out here with a full set of travel gear. I pre-weighed it. It weighs about 7.9 kilograms or about 17.4 pounds. The Porter is a moderately comfortable backpack. The shoulder straps are easy to adjust with the sternum strap and the top load adjusters. However, the backpack straps are a little bit thin for a bag of this size. And then the hip belts are also a little bit thin. You can see they kind of stop short and don't come around all the way to the sides on me over here. And then you can see where you adjust them is on the front instead of on the sides like the far point. So you're gonna have these little straps dangling in front of you. And then I'll switch everything over to the far point. It's a little bit smaller of a bag, but I wanted to be fair with comparing these bags with a similar amount of weight. The fit in this bag is pretty similar on me, at least. I did get a size that's fitted for my torso length. It has pretty similar sternum strap. It has similar top load adjusters, but the shoulder straps are noticeably more thicker and comfortable. And the same with the padding and the hip belt. It's quite a bit thicker and it comes around all the way to the side on me. And you can see this adjuster strap, instead of being on the front like the Porter, it's adjusted over here on the sides so you don't have the strap dangling in front of you. And again, I've had a version of the Farpoint since about 2015, and I've always thought this was a very comfortable bag to carry around. Now looking at the interior organization and packing style between these two bags. The main compartments on both these bags open from the top with a large U-zip opening. 
almost all the volume on the porter is gonna be in this main duffel style compartment. Well, the main compartment on the far point is quite a bit smaller and the capacity is split between this compartment and then the larger front compartment. The interior of these packs is also quite a bit different. The porter is larger and it's more square with these two small organizational pockets inside running the length of the compartment. The far point is much more rounded on the interior with this weird space on the bottom of the bag that's kind of hard to pack. It also has a large mesh pocket on the top of the lid and then these interior compression straps that the porter doesn't have. The shape and size on the main interior compartments make the packing style between these two bags quite different. The Porter is much more straightforward to pack with this large main compartment. I have these two medium 10 by 14 inch packing cubes that really fit in the bottom of this bag perfectly, the main compartment. And then it's really easy to just stack the rest of your gear, bulky items on top of here. And then you have lots of small pockets for organizational items, front slash pocket, and then this front pocket here, which has a ton of pockets and zippers for all your small items. These same two packing cubes also fit into the far point, but it's not quite as perfect of a fit because the interior is much more rounded. And then these square packing cubes will leave this weird space on the bottom of the bag that's difficult to pack. And it forces you to put something in here like small rain jacket to fill this space. You also have much less room in the main compartment because the capacity is split between that and this top pocket. So you're gonna have to rely on this top organizational pocket to put a few large bulky items like a jacket. The far point also doesn't have great organization for small items. It's really just this front slash pocket and then these two big pockets in this front compartment. This means you're either gonna have to just stuff all your items into these two pockets or use extra organizers or pouches to organize your gear. In summary, these are both great travel backpacks, but each of them has their own strengths and weaknesses. The Porter has a huge main compartment that's easy to pack. It has great compression straps and an awesome laptop compartment. However, the backpack straps leave much to be desired in terms of carry comfort, especially for a bag this large. The Far Point is the more comfortable of these two packs to carry, has great backpack straps, thick, sturdy hip belts, and a comfortable, breathable back paneling. However, this bag doesn't have a great laptop compartment and the packing style tends to be awkward and not as straightforward as the Porter. I hope you enjoyed this review comparison between the Osprey Porter 46 and the Farpoint 40. If you have any questions about either of these bags, then please let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Again, if you like videos like this, comparisons, bag reviews, then please subscribe to our channel and thanks for watching.